Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, can you see can you see my screen? Everything looks okay. Are you going to post this recording afterwards? Yes, I will. I will do that tonight for both. Uh, uh, we have we have a few recording. I need to um, I need to share with you as soon as possible. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. So uh, today for this recording, I'm going to show you uh, homework assignment number two. Okay, so there are two parts. The first part is is relatively simple that you need to use or write a client program to obtain your your virtual ID. All right. So. Um, I'm going to do something which is, uh, let me see, how should I start it with? So let me actually show you how I do it, okay? So there is a ECA36BH2 uh, client. Uh, so I'm going to do this. Let me first check whether the, the, whether the, uh, the server is still running, okay? I haven't checked for a while. Okay, this one is, okay, I have a bunch of server running. <clears throat> so I'm first going to check what program I have. So you see that I have, uh, I still have this one running. This one is actually homework assignment number one. This is homework assignment number two, uh, part one. And this is homework assignment number two, part two. So I have a three server uh, handling different parts of the homework. So I'm going to look at, uh, let's look at first um, homework assignment number two, part one. By the way, uh, if you're doing uh, Unix related to development, Using screen is a very useful, very useful tool. I mean, in the future, I will share with you how to use a command screen to allow me to put the server running forever while I'm logged out, and then I can reconnect very easily. So this, uh, wait a minute, I have to go screen minus ls. That's been detached. Why it doesn't allow me to Oh, I know, because they both call screen. Okay, so here is, oh, apparently the server is down. So I'm going to run the server again. <clears throat> so this is my server. You see the, the zip code is a little bit different. It's the other uh, Davis zip code 95618. So I'm actually going to run the server. And now I'm um, CD, CD. Um, oh, I need to go to par one. <clears throat> okay, this is my par one over here. All right. So let me move my window a little bit smaller so you guys can see what's going on. Okay, so now I resize my window. So I already have an executable code. You can see that this is a program ECS uh, 36B underscore HW2. So I just run the program. Okay, so this program takes uh, three parameter. Uh, okay, uh, the instruction is wrong actually. The first parameter is IP address. The second parameter is a poor number. But the third parameter, as we specify here, is going to be a, a JSON that I'm going to uh, send it over, okay? So I'm going to do, uh, the, the IP address is still is uh, Cyrus, so is 169, 
0.237.6.102. Okay, the poor number, as I mentioned, is 95618. All right, so I'm going to try to send a JSON. Okay, so I'm actually going to write a JSON right here. I can say action. What was the first one? It says action, right? ECS 36. HW2. Okay, so I'm going to just type in here uh, ECF36B HW2. Okay, I'm just going to send a very small JSON. Okay, I'm going to show you that I'm going to get an error, get an error because that JSON is actually have some problem. If I do this, uh, wait a minute. There's something I need to enter. I haven't entered. Let me let me take a look at my client program. Oh, you know what? I know what happened. So this program is expecting four parameter. Okay, including the the executable name. It's supposed to give me three, but now I actually provide three IP address port number, and this part, a uh, JSON. But the thing is that it actually gave me. It actually gave me saying that, hey, um, my program basically, if your uh, what you call ARGC number is incorrect, then we're going to be in trouble. So let me actually first tell you that when I enter a command line like this, what do you think should be the ARGC number? What, what should be the ARGC number in this command line? Anybody want to uh, try to give a guess? Okay, in this case, I can tell you that the ARGC is going to be one, two, three, and will be four because I have a space here. So in the shell command, that is actually treating this as a only one ARGV, and this is the next one. So over here is a five, so it's actually not going to work. So I'm going to tell you that there is a multiple way you can do this. One way is just enter a lot of backslash over here to basically put everything together is a one single string. And the other one is you can write a client program. You can just um, get this done within your, 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 your program to fix that. So I'm going to add a lot of backslash. So bracket, I need a backslash. Double call, I need a backslash. There's another double call here. Here's a space, I definitely need a backslash. And then here I need a backslash for double call. And here I need a backslash. And here I need a backslash. If I have all this backslash, I basically convert the, the string into a complete string that my program can take it as a regular string. And not being because the reason I need to get uh, bat, um, uh, backslash is because bash shell is interpret interpret the the result differently. There is a space issue. There is a special character issue. So now if I enter, okay, good. Now you see that I don't have that uh, um, um, uh, ARGC ARGV problem, and I actually send it to the to the server, and this is basically say. Hey, I, I got connect. My server is really running. The poor number is okay, but unfortunately, I supposed to enter everything as to specify here, and I kind of uh, just just try it out. I only uh, provide the first part of the JSON, right? Only this part, and so I miss a lot of information. So the 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 program will say, "Hey, you failed. Uh, you cannot you cannot do this." Okay, so. Okay, good. Uh, if you got this, that means you're on the right track. So you just need to add more, okay? So let me actually try to write something over here and then I will just copy over there, okay? So I'm going to do this. Okay, JSON, and then I'm going to do SID. SID, I'm going to use my own fake ID, okay, that's my ID. You should run your program. You can test it with any ID, but when you really want to get your virtual ID, you need to provide the right ID, okay? 
And then I will pick uh, Avatar. I will, today I will pick uh, Nemo. Uh, no, I don't like Nemo. I know uh, I want uh, um, Oracle. All right. So I said, don't give me a name that's too much, too long, okay? 32 character. Okay, for code right now, we can just enter something. Uh, you can enter whatever code you, you have when you receive homework assignment number one. I, I can tell you a secret right now, the server doesn't do the matching. So you can just put any number here. And source IP, <clears throat> I'm good because I'm submitting from homework assignment number one, I'm going to use my, my IP address here, 76.20.47.100. And okay, this part is interesting. Now it's a latitude. Okay, my latitude, let me actually use my Google map. Ah, where's my Google map? I was doing a lot of latitude stuff today. Here is a Google map. I was checking for the, for Sydney, okay? Um, so Sydney's, uh, the, the, uh, the GPS is minus 33.87 and 151.21. Uh, let me just use Sydney, assuming I'm in Sydney. So latitude is going to be Minus thirty three dot minus thirty three dot eighty seven two a seven two. Okay, this is DD format. Okay, I'm just I'm just doing some random thing here to to get it to work. And longitude is. 151.213, okay. And my IF config Source IP address is 192.168.1.8. And finally, net, I will say yes, because I those two IP addresses are different, so I'm going to be yes. Okay, so this is a complete JSON. It's a specify in the homework sum number two. So I'm going to copy and paste the whole JSON over to the window. So now I come back to here, want to run this program again, okay? But now I'm going to take the whole JSON control. Ah, I don't like, like to do that. Okay. Yeah, apparently. Okay, I might have to do something special, but that's okay. I'm going to just manually type it in, but remember I have to add all this backslash, okay? So I'm gonna add all the backslash here. Hopefully this will not take a lot of time. There are three things you need to add backslash. Bracket, left and right, and also double quote, and also space, okay? So here I need to add backslash. Wait a minute, what happened? Something strange was the. Hold on one second. Let me go back. That backslash went to the wrong place. That's what I'm worried. This backslash. Okay, that's okay, that's fine. 
this is a backslash and this is a backslash and this is a backslash this is a backslash this is a backslash okay i have to do this for the whole json if i want to do manually without using a program later you will see that you can actually do it in the program way Doing a program, then you don't need to worry about this backslash. My window seems to be really odd. I have a question. Sure, go ahead. Um, so I get it that we can do this back backslash like escape character stuff. But mm -hmm. what if are we allowed to like say um, go into Notepad and then type out normally the JSON, save it as JSON, and then just like throw the file in at the end? Would that work? We just type it in like in the terminal, like, type it out. Okay. If you if you write your client program to do that, that's fine. But which you basically if you write the regular json as a file which i think is a better idea to yeah. just read the file directly into your program yeah you're not you you're not being messed up with a unix terminal that's 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 actually a better way to do that okay thank you yeah i i just want to show you that sometime you can you can it's very tedious when you try to do this kind of stuff. Okay, so now I got this part and I think minus 33, let me see where I am. So I need to have this part to copy and paste. Okay, so now I can do this part of the copy and paste. I'm almost there. Almost done. Okay, the last part, finally. Okay, almost done. All right, so now I essentially encoded all my, the whole JSON on the, this kind of uh, terminal, and then I have this. Now I'm going to enter. What happened? Fail, RC is equal to minus one. Okay, check my server. There's something wrong with my parsing because this is on my server side. There's something, let me, let me actually check the, check the JSON I just got, you see. So I got the, no, I cannot even get the latitude correctly. The code, source IP, latitude. No, I know what happened. Because my Microsoft Word, the double quote is not double quote. Oh my goodness, this is, this is really bad. I know what happened exactly. I have to go back to replace all the double quote. How lovely that is, sorry about that. <clears throat> um, it's, it's a different character that was using double quote instead of when I do the copy and paste from Microsoft Word. It's not going straight. It's it's like a it's like going the left side a little bit. So now I have to replace. I wish I can use my editor to do all this. So essentially, if you don't have that double quote correctly, it won't be recognized as a, as a 
as a valid J JSON. This is uh, another example of incompatibility between the Unix world and the uh, uh, Microsoft world. Okay, I'm almost done. Uh, hopefully this time it will make sure that the JSON is parsable. What happened this time? Minus four. Minus four, because I have checked a lot about the status. I'm going to now go to my source code to see what is the, the issue that I know what what is not being entered correctly. So I'm going to do not this window. I'm going to use this window. <clears throat> Each of the code represent a special meaning that I need to interpret. <clears throat> Okay, what is minus four? Okay, I'm expecting the first string, the first string has to be action, and the action has to be this name. And what did I have? Oh, you know what, I miss a B. You see that when I type the string is ECS 36, I forgot a B. That's important because I, I want to make sure that this is indeed a homework assignment that you're submitting. Sorry about that. That's just sometimes the computer program, they check for everything, make sure that your JSON syntactically and its content is, is correct. <clears throat> but this RC code that you received during the, during the, uh, um, execution will give us information. Okay, good. You see that right now you got something. It doesn't say fail, but it says already assigned. It has a VSID, but it's already assigned. Why is that? Because when I tried the program last night, I already assigned myself, which is this, this uh, virtual ID, this student ID, I already assigned a virtual ID. So by the, by the way, this is my virtual ID. I'm going to use this virtual ID for my homework assignment number two, part two. But this is essentially that I don't want you to submit your homework multiple times and then you basically tell me, oh, uh, I have a multiple virtual ID. No, every student will only go get one uh, virtual ID. If you submit your homework multiple times, but if you're already successful in an earlier time, then you won't, you won't actually get your, your virtual, get another new one. It's just one of those. Okay, so since I already assigned myself, so I'm going to, you know what? I'm gonna do something which is a little bit dramatic. I'm going to kill this program because I, I don't think anybody have, anybody have done this already. You can see that right now, this is the JSON I received from your side. And this is the way I, I use JSON uh, parser to parse each of the field you just enter. And then I actually put it in the database for, for um, like a master file. So I'm going to kill this. And uh, the, the reason uh, that I know you already have it because I have a file called VS. Let me show you this file looks like. This file is actually uh, the only entry I have. So I, I did this yesterday. So I'm the only one, so nobody else is here. So this is a file 
And basically what I kept is, the first one is my student ID. The second one is my virtual ID. And the third one is my, uh, the avatar name. The name, did I, did I? Yeah, you see this time I was tell my name as, uh, as Oracle. But yesterday I said I'm a Lion King. So when I have a Lion King, that the name is, is Lion King. I did this last night. Oh, actually this morning. Early this morning, I actually submit this one. Okay, so so I, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to remove this file. I'm going to because I'm the only one. I'm going to remove this, and then I'm going to touch it, and I'm going to run the server again. Okay, so now I'm going to run the server again, and now I'm going to run the my client program again. Ah, you see, now I'm actually getting a different one. So this, the last time I run, it says assign already and gave me a virtual ID. So I already get rid of that. And now when I run it, it actually gave me a successful. And this time it's actually giving me the name Oracle, uh, which is interesting. Why I don't have a double quote here. Okay, I need to fix this. Is this supposed to have a double quote? Why Oracle doesn't have a double quote, I don't know. Okay, but this is the JSON is being sent back to me. And uh, also um, it has IP address, but the most important thing is this one. This is my, my virtual ID, I'm gonna use it. And I just want to tell you that now I got, got back to my, the other program. I, by, by the way, I should tell you that because I removed that, this virtual ID is securely generated, uh, so it's pretty long, okay? It's really, really long. So uh, uh, you, you, you probably cannot remember, and you have to just, just uh, get a work here. Uh, I want to just tell you one thing. Yeah, I forgot the seed number is the same I use. Let me do this. But this, this record now, now I want to tell you that in my master database, you see that this one was, was created, this entry, and now it's called Oracle, and it was created today at 320, uh, which is right now, okay? So if you do the same thing, let me actually just try on, on uh, TA's behave because I have another fake account. Uh, let me do everything else is the same. But I'm going to do another account called Nemo. And I will have my SID to be another fake ID, 2234. Okay, do like this. Wait a minute. Oh, because I killed it. All right, sorry. I have to restart my server. And then I do Okay, now I got another successful one. Oh, I'm in trouble. Sorry. I have to kill this one. Do you see what happened? I have to remove this. I, I realized there was a, a big mistake I made. RN touch. Yes, ID. This is the seat. Okay, now I start it. Now I want to run the first one. That's actually my own. I'm going to, that's Oracle. Okay, I got a successful. And now you see my VSID change because I enter a different seat. And then I'm going to run this for uh, the, the other fake account. That's two, two, three, four, instead of one, two, three, four. And this is also uh, got accepted. So I have a two different ID. So if you, if I do a control Z here and look at, no, I don't want to remove it. I just want to show you what it is. Okay, I actually have a two account. One is for me, one is for the TA Jerry Wayne. 
Okay, you can see that I built a record. What's his name? Wait a minute, I thought I have his name. Somewhere. Where's Jerry? I thought Jerry's name is somewhere. Okay, anyway, don't worry. And, uh, oh, okay, here. Wait a minute, I saw that. Oh, here, here. I basically found his name, his real name, because I matched to his, uh, that is the fake account I created for, for our, one of our TA. Okay, so now you see that the VS record now have a two record here. And, and this is your student ID and this is your um, uh, virtual ID. And subsequently, we will be only use this one for the rest of the quarter. Okay, and then we're going to forget about this one. Okay, this is just for grading. I'm going to use this one. But for all the homework assignment, I'm going to use this one. All right, any question? for part one of homework assignment number one. Homework assignment number two, sorry. Part one for homework assignment number two. Um, do you run the client program on the CSIF machine or your local machine? You, um, I do it on my uh, uh, local machine. You can do this in any machine. I, I will actually suggest you to do on your local machine. Don't need to use the uh, CSIF machine. And, and to be honest with you, you can even use your homework assignment number one, the client, uh, the, 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 the homework assignment number one client, but you need to put a lot of backslash and make sure the double quote is correct. Okay. Is there another question? Um, is there any material that can, that's very helpful to learn how to write the um, client um, for the homework too. Okay, so the way to do it, I, I suggest you do it is is uh, is both for you to read the program and for you to to um, to learn how to modify a program to get it to work. So I will suggest you to do this one. Let me go to your homework assignment number one. Okay, which you didn't write have to write program, but this is the program that you download, right? So you're essentially using this program called client.c. This is a program that's, that's uh, ready available that looking into this program, you probably see how, uh, let me see how long is this program. This program is not that long, not that long, let me see. This program have 81 lines of code and this program essentially will be able to do the job. But you can use this program as a basis to, to do some kind of tweaking, to, to do whatever you think makes sense. But, but I, I can tell you that you can use this program to use exactly as it is and to deliver the part one of homework assignment number two. Uh, but you need to be careful about the backslash and the double quote and the curly bracket, those kind of issues. But on the other hand, you can certainly um, um, modify this program. For example, you can actually read in the JSON instead of try to read in from the ARGC, ARGV interface and for you to do that. And this is a C program. So therefore, uh, if you are uh, taking ECF 30 or 36A in C, then you should, uh, know something about how to how to modify this program, understand the program. But if, if you are unfamiliar with C or you are taking ECF 36A using Python, then this is the opportunity that for you to learn a little bit about the C syntax uh, uh, and, and learn how this program work. And, and I'll be happy to, um, to have another session which I can actually go through this program, this 80 lines of program uh, in depth about network programming. I, I think um, yesterday I mentioned there was about five and six video I want to do. And one of them is, uh, is internet protocol, which is including the network programming. That this is a program is essentially tell you how do you actually be able to communicate with the other program. This is called inter-process communication, which is, you can imagine how useful it is because with internet using the things called socket interface that you can actually build very powerful 
uh, application that can interact with, with a lot of other resources on the internet, okay? So that, that's, that's my kind of high level recommendation. Uh, for, for working on homework assignment number two, part one, to get going to obtain the, the virtual student ID number, uh, uh, you, you, you should try to do minimal and, and, and get it to work. But on the other hand, for your learning, that this is, that's why I sent you the, the source code for homework assignment number one. It's really want you to start to get exposed to this, this program so you can try to learn from this program about how to do write a client program. In fact, I also send you a server program as well, so you can see the, the server part, okay? <clears throat> so who asked the, the question? Is that Luis or? Yeah, I am. I have. Okay, so Luis, if, if you have, uh, try to take a look at this program because I, I, I forgot about uh, your background. Maybe you are taking ECF36A in Python. Then in this case, yeah, this this will be fairly different from uh, from the Python version, um, but I'll be happy to um, um, arrange another time for us to to have a more in depth discussion about this this program. Okay, but the other thing which I, I want to tell just just among among four or five of you, and some of you are are Python programmer. And Python actually has a similar interface to this as well to do socket programming. And it's, it's actually cleanest in my opinion. I mean, I mean C is, is really powerful, but sometimes really tedious. And Python already handle a lot of uh, low level stuff for us. So writing a, a inter-process communication and socket programming is a lot easier to develop in, in Python, okay? <clears throat> All right. Any other question before I move to part two of homework assignment number two? Okay, so I'm going to move on to part two right now, okay? Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna move up here. So part two, basically, um, I'm, I'm trying to, there, there are about six programs. Okay, there are six programs. There are a few classes, but I is mainly about person.h and transaction.h. So I'm going to give you person.h, transaction.h, and also ECF36B. I think right now I call it part two actually. Dot CPP, and then the make file. That this this link is already available that you can actually click it. And this is the this is the file that you can actually download. Okay, let's let's try to download this file to see what it is. <clears throat> okay, I have the file here. Nah. What have you done? Okay, I'm going to do the download part. Okay, so if you look at this, I actually have a seven file. So I have uh, uh, person.cpp, person.h, transaction cpp, transaction h, make file, and ECF 36 underscore homework two, part two dot cpp. The only file that's new here is I put a readme. I put a readme about how you can actually execute the program, okay? So let's actually take a look at this program, what those five or six programs they're doing, okay? I think I called it uh, homework two. Okay, the directory is called ECF36B homework two part two unfinished. Okay, I will tell you why it says unfinished. So if you first take a look at uh, person.h, this, this program is finished. So I already defined the interface about uh, a few class. In fact, in this, in this person.h, I define three different class. One is called GPS DD, which is the global positioning system using the DD format. So DD format is essentially two double. That's why it's DD. 
one is represent latitude, one is represent uh, longitude. Okay, and then I define a bunch of public interface, such as the constructor, I have a two constructor, and then I have uh, three uh, function. One is called get latitude, one is called get longitude, and the other one is called distance. So distance is interesting. Distance is, is that you gave me uh, another GPS DD, and I try to calculate what's the, what's the distance between these two. So essentially you think about one GPS is the location in Davis, the other in New York. Uh, and then what's the, if, if, if you were given two GPS location, then what will be the distance between those two? For example, you're flying from Sacramento to uh, New York, uh, say JFK airport, and how many miles? So how does the United airline or whatever airline to decide how many miles that it's going to fly through, right? So, so the, this is uh, interesting. I have, I, have a, I have a function called distance for you to calculate the distance between these two. Okay, so maybe I just want to ask, uh, I, I know most of you probably don't know the answer uh, uh, in your head. Uh, how many miles different between Davis and uh, New York? New York City, say Manhattan, how many miles? Anybody want to give a guess? I'm going to say 2,500. You're very good. Yes, it is. We'll show you exactly the answer. Wait, can I get extra credit then? What? Can you get extra credit for that? Say it again. I, I, I didn't get what, what you said manual. Can I get extra credit for guessing it? All right, I will, I will consider that. Okay, this, our conversation has been recorded right now. Okay, yeah. but you're you're good. You you know that I think you're you're within like a twenty miles difference between between yeah. Davis and New York. I, I because the reason I calculated, I using GPS. I, you will show the number. Okay, so that's the first class. It's called GPS. So you can see that this is called encapsulation. So encapsulation means that I I gave you the the interface, but I didn't give you the implementation. Right? You don't know how I did this implementation is in separate, okay? So, so that's the first class is GPS DD notation. And the second class I define using here is IP address. I kind of put in here, I probably should have put it into multiple file, but this is your first object into programming. I don't want to make it too messy. It's just, just 2.h file is fine. So this is a class which is IP address, and uh, this is a private part, just unsigned integer, which is because IP address is 32 bit, as this happened to, for our machine, integer is 32 bit. That's why I'm just using unsigned integer to represent uh, IP version four address. It's an integer. And then I have uh, IP address over here. Ah, what did I do? Ah, uh, you see? He's not very happy. Okay, fine. So for this homework assignment, the IP address is kind of dummy. So you don't need to worry too much about IP address. Okay, because this homework assignment is mostly about GPS calculation. All right. But this is the class I will have and later we'll use this a lot in this class. That's why I want to put it here. And again, I have a public function, IP address, IP address. And then I have a get IP address string, which is you are getting the IP address is like 169.237.6.102, those kind of string. That's a, that's a string representation about IP address. But also you can get IP address by value, which is the integer. I, I think I show you uh, in the office hour yesterday, how do you do the conversion between the string and the value and vice versa. Okay, so that, that, is, that is the, um, the, the IP, the second class. This will be interesting is that the third uh, class is called class person. That's the, that's the core, not just for this homework, it's pretty much for the rest of the homework, okay? So, so again, I define interface here. I have, a, I have a class that has a private and has a public, okay? So the private I have, you see now I, have, I, I start to introduce some of the element that we taught in the first three lecture the number one, I define a static private uh, member, static variable. Remember, there was a static variable within the class called uh, object count. 
So now I'm doing the same thing. Static, this is called person count. Okay, so this is not an object, not a, sorry, it's not an attribute associated with each object. This is the attribute associated with class. Okay, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, I think you need to go back to, I think, lecture number two to see the static variable. Okay, all right. So now a person has a VSID. Okay, by the way, this VSID is exactly the ID you just obtained from the part one of homework assignment number two. And this name is going to be your avatar name that you're going to have. And the hometown for right now, you can neglect that because later uh, the next homework, you're going to use a service to, to use your IP address to, to obtain that information uh, directly. And also you have another one is that what's the GPS location of your home. Okay, so we have this as a private information about the person. So we actually started with something which uniquely identified the person. And later we'll see that you want to add more attribute into that, that's extensibility, but we cannot do that until we cover the idea of inheritance. Okay, so we haven't talked about inheritance, so we're gonna build up the basic, um, basic um, class person. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I have a public uh, variable. Public, of course, I have a person as a constructor. I just put two constructor, and I can have a set home. I, I can set home using the, the, the string, which is I set home the hometown, or I can set home using the GPS. Okay, I can do that either way. But now this is uh, exciting, this is overloading. You see I'm doing overloading here. Boolean operator equal equal means that I overload the semantics of equal. Okay, the comparison equal. And I'm actually trying to compare two person. What do I mean by comparing two person? I'm actually comparing this two person, whether they're the same, if just tell you the semantic, if they share the same VSID and share the same avatar. If both, they share the, I think in my code, I will show you the code later. I probably just compare that this two person, if, they're, if their VSID is the same, they're the same person, basically. That, that's, that's how we use this overloading to, to do the comparison. And then of course I have a public variable because you can set this VSID when you create it. I want to know whether this VS, how do you get the VSID and how do you get the name? Because those are the two things you want to get out of the person object. Okay, so this is the interface for three uh, uh, classes. Okay, so I just want to go to transaction. <clears throat> So transaction is essentially allow us to model a person's activity. The activity could be uh, you, you, you have a trip, you ate at a restaurant, but this homework assignment, I'm actually only model one type of transaction is flying. It's actually flying from one city to the other. So, so here is the basic definition, it's the same thing, okay. But now you look at my, my first part of the transaction dot h is that this, this actually include person dot h. So it means that the transaction is depending on the, the person dot h as a definition. So, and then I define only one transaction type, which is a fly. Okay, tr type fly one, I will show you how I'm gonna use this, but I'm gonna show you my transaction definition interface is, is like this part. Okay, again, I have, I have uh, the private part and I have a public part. So the private part, again, I have a static variable I call transaction count. I always want to count how many transaction objects have been created. That's why I use transaction count, just like object count we use, or static variable. And I have a transaction type, I have a transaction status, and then I have transaction as two person involved. Okay, so, so now I have a sender, receiver, and I also have uh, the, the sender's GPS, uh, oh, sorry, source GPS and destination GPS. And also I want to say, when did the transaction happen? So I have a time, and then I have IP address, which is the source IP address and destination address. So I, I provide 
kind of a few attributes around person, GPS, and IP address to actually try to describe what is a transaction. In this part, I just put it here as a placeholder, but I didn't uh, start exploring this for this homework assignment. This is usually a transaction have a more detailed data, and usually we call it uh, transaction data. And this is going to be very useful when you integrate this with virtual function and, uh, um, and also inheritance. So I'm going to just put a placeholder here. In fact, in this homework assignment, we're not going to do much about this, okay? And, and then, of course, the public side, I have this two constructor transaction. You can see that now when you create a transaction, you have to put person, two person, and then uh, GPS uh, for, for each of this, and then IP address at a time. I set data is just something which uh, is a placeholder, I didn't use it. And then get data, these two are both placeholders, sorry about that. But this is interesting, this is called get distance. Because apparently in the transaction, they have a two GPS uh, location. And I want to know how much different, if this is a fly, I want to know uh, how long it's going to uh, uh, take for, for from point A to point B as a transaction, as a flight. That's why I need to have this function called get distance. And then I have a, this function, which you don't need to worry about. I already write it because I need to have a way whenever you have a transaction, I, you want to know the meaning about this transaction, you can actually call this function called description. It will tell you what this transaction is about. So that's why I have a function called description. Okay, so this is this is the H file. So, so you can see that none of the file I show you so far, you should modify for homework assignment number two because I provide a definition interface and you're going to do the implementation. Okay, so I'm going to now show you, uh, let me go through transaction CPP first. Let me tell you that what transaction CPP looks like. So this is the transaction uh, CPP, which is the first line. You should actually uh, include the, the transaction.h. You should include that, okay? Um, so that's the definition interface. And you can see that over here is just all the, what I call the, the template or, or the function prototype, right? For example, the first function is the constructor for transaction. And then you can see that within this curly bracket, I said slash slash comments say to be implemented by the student. So essentially, this is the part you're going to fill in, okay? So for example, transaction, and here you have another one, another constructor. Set data, uh, get data is very simple. Just basically, uh, I can just show you very quickly what you can do with this set data. Let me just go here to pull out transaction. Let me just show you an example, something you can do. <clears throat> so you, you see here is a TR data, right? So essentially when I say set data, I'm just say this TR data, is equal to ARG data. Okay, I just, that's the set data. And get data is, looks like return uh, this TR data. That's it, you finish the implementation. This is probably the, the simplest uh, way you can do this, okay? Uh, the simplest function that you only need to write one line of code. But the more complicated is probably like a get distance, those kind of things. Okay, get distance is a big chunk that which you need to develop. And, and the thing is that the other one is, uh, uh, I, I said description, I already implement description and I include it in that file you receive. So you don't need to worry about uh, description. It's basically just tell you whether this is a one person transaction or two person transaction and what's the distance, right? You see that inside this, I'm actually say, I call myself, say this, get distance. I call this function, which I expect you implement over here, okay? So you can see what I give you is a skeleton about the 
a, a class definition and the method, and I already defined the interface which you need to finish to make the program uh, to be complete. Okay. Any question? Okay. So I'm going to show you a demo about how it works. Okay. So just very quickly to go through person.cpp because you haven't saw this one. So person.cpp is the same thing. GPS and all the all the member function and and also I write down to be implemented by the by the student. In fact, in fact I already I, I already actually in, insert this line there. So you, you don't even need to do anything about that. But there is a one function which is really important. <coughs> it's called distance. So distance basically say I have one GPS, I want to calculate the GPS about both, uh, both, um, 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 both GPS location. So of course, to, to understand the GPS location is not something which uh, we have covered in the class. But there is a program open source, you can actually download. And this program, I actually give it to you, the pointer is from the, the geo data source. This link there. Let me actually just go there to show you what it is. <clears throat> so this is the implementation simple code for calculating two points given latitude and longitude of this two point, and it can calculate it. And this is their 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 uh, uh, product, but they share this uh, so we can actually use it to run our program. And in particularly, they actually implement a program here called double distance. So you can see that they provide latitude one, longitude one, latitude two, longitude two, and then the unit, the character unit. What is the unit? The unit is that if you put an M as a character, which is going to be miles, K is kilometer, N is nautical miles. Okay, I don't know why that is, by the way. I just use mine, okay? Um, so that is a code that uh, you can, you should, uh, what, I, what I mentioned there, you should actually cut and paste this piece of code. They're actually using, you can see that it's not that long, but there is a lot of sign, cosine, if you're interested to, to study. Basically, they, if you think about calculating the distance, it's not that trivial because you're not calculating the distance in a direct in the metro space, in the uh, uh, metro space. You're actually calculating along the, along the surface of the earth. That's why you have to use uh, the, the different kind of uh, sine, cosine to help you to, to capture that um, uh, distance. But this is something which is, um, you should just use your code and integrate, it will beautifully give you the result. This code is, is very nice, okay? All right, so this is the same thing. You, you build a code to get this implement. All right, so now I'm going to show you, and by the way, any question before I start running the program? All right, I, there was one more program I forgot to tell you, which is, uh, ECS. Okay, this is a driver program, the main program. I mean, you have to have a main program, right? You have to have a main program. And this program, by the way, you're not supposed to touch, okay? I said not to modify. Not to modify means that you have to use the program as it is, all right? So this program essentially has a two part. The first part is, uh, is, is basically uh, the, the, um, the TCP IP code, the network programming, the same code as the, the client code to help me to build up the, the, the socket stuff so I can send the stuff over there, okay? And, and then the following part is really the C++ code it is going to use, you can see I actually include person.h, I include transaction.h, okay? I include those two so I can do something. And that, let's look at what, what my code looks like. So of course I take a four, uh, three parameter. The first is IP address, port number, and your virtual ID you just got from the part one, all right? And then you're, you're having this, um, um, having this object-oriented stuff. 
uh, the program is actually very simple. The first one, it actually create a GPS object called GPS Davis, which is 38.5 minus 121.7, which is uh, I, I grab it from uh, Google Map. And also GPS NYC is 40.7 minus 73.95. And GPS Sydney, uh, which is because is uh, the other half of the Earth. So it's the, the, the minus and plus is opposite, okay? So it's minus 33.87 and then 151.213, okay? And then I actually provide some IP address. By the way, this IP address is, is bogus because I, I haven't actually get the right IP address here for this homework, don't worry about that. Okay, so I create two person. One person is called Lion King, which is uh, whatever the, the, the um, any kind of virtual address I, I provide there. Uh, this is basically the, the fake address. Um, that's okay. Later, we're going to put in the, the real VS ID when we want to do a more complicated scenario. So I have a transaction. Transaction is a fly number one. It's actually from Davis to New York, okay? So that's why now you see I, my the transaction type is TR type flight. That means it's represent the uh, type. And then I provide, uh, I, I print out the description and then have some result. And then I create another person called Nemo. And then I have a flight number two from New York to Sydney. And then I have a number three, which is basically uh, from uh, Sydney back to Davis, okay? So I have a three fly, three transaction with two person involved, okay? If you notice that the, the, uh, the first trip is just, uh, just, just uh, Lion King, just, just, just Lion King himself fly from Davis to NYC. The second trip, both of them, both Lion King and the Nemo, they, they fly to Sydney. Is that right? Wait a minute. Sorry, sorry. I make me say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first trip is Davis to New York City, only the Lion King. And the second one is from New York City to Sydney. Both of them actually fly over there. P1 and P2 both fly there. But then only uh, Nemo fly back to Davis. The third trip is from Sydney to Davis. So in fact, if you if you look at this about their current location, you realize I will ask you, where are where is Lion King? Lion King is actually still in uh, Sydney. And where is uh, uh, Nemo? Nemo is in Davis, okay? So, so those are the things you can answer for where is everybody, okay? But, but the, the things I want to test for this is checking for the distance. So um, uh, what I have here is that I construct, you can see I start to construct a JSON because this JSON is, I'm going to send it to the server for homework assignment number two, part two, so I can validate whether you actually calculate the right uh, GPS location. So you can see that this, I, I'm going to, you, you can see that now I'm actually not, uh, uh, not have to do this backslash whatever in the, in the, um, in the uh, terminal, but I can just using my C++ program and to construct a JSON this way. It's, it's much cleaner for me to do that. So I'm using C++ uh, to the string interface to do this. And you can see that what I did is I look at, um, okay, the action is ECF36B homework two part two. And VSID is your ID that you have to provide uh, input with your, with your um, um, uh, ARGV. And then your distance number one is the distance for fly one, which is calling the function fly one, which is a transaction to get the distance in miles. But I translate that double into a string format so I can actually construct my JSON nicely. And then I run the di distance for number two and distance for number three and I construct this. And then I basically send the JSON to the server. And then um, the server is going to check your result, whether your result is correct or not. And then they will, um, they will um, um, tell you whether you successfully uh, pass or not. Okay, so that, that's, that's the, uh, this, the other program. This program you're going to compile with your CPP, those two CPP files you modify and you're not supposed to modify. 
Okay. Okay, I'm going to run this program now. Of course, this is unfinished. I cannot use this version to test it. I'm going to use my own version, which is the one I already completed. <clears throat> Okay, now I'm in uh, part two. Okay, now you can see I also have the six program here, but but everything I have already complete. Okay, oh, I should let you see this. Uh, go go up. Okay, wow, you can probably rewind this recording to see what I what I put down there. Okay, all right. So I'm going to compile. Okay, now you can see I, I generate this program uh, called ECF36BH2 testing, right? All right, so I'm going to run this program. Uh, no. I forgot. I remember I have to type in a lot of parameter to get this to work. Let me see. Okay, this one is not so bad. I only need three parameter. Okay, so the first parameter is IP address. I'm going to still type in our favorite uh, Cyrus IP address. And the port number, what was the port number for part two? Let me check, okay. I actually use a special port number for this. Um, That's why the readme file is important. Uh, what do I do? R, no, only two, okay. Okay, the part, the port number is 95837, which is a zip code for Sacramento Airport. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm using our neighborhood uh, um, uh, zip code as the port number. Okay, uh, where am I? Okay, here. Core number it was nine five eight three seven nine five eight three seven. Okay, and then I'm going to type in. Okay, I'm going to type in something which is kind of fake as well. I'm going to use this one. Oracle. Am I going to cause core dump on this one? Let me see. Okay, connection failed, that means my server is down, okay? So, you, but before I go to my server, um, you can see that I'm actually sending that this program will send three things. Number one is the, uh, the, the action, which is ECF36BH homework two, part two. Uh, that is the, the program I gave you, uh, the CPP file, the include the main function, it automatically generate. If you implement the person.cpp and transaction.cpp um, correctly, then this JSON will be construct uh, correctly. And the second part is the, um, the, um, the, the virtual ID that you just have. And then I have a three distance. The first distance is actually from Davis to New York, that's why Manuel, you were very good. It was, you said 2,500, right? This is 2,515. That's, that's calculate Davis to uh, Manhattan. And the second, second distance, guess what this distance is? It's almost 10,000 miles. Anybody want to guess? What's, what was that distance? Did you, did you follow my program? <laughs> like from a location? Yes, that is, that was actually from. Let me. Actually, Davis, Sydney. That was from uh, New York to Sydney. Oh, okay. So let me let me go go let me go back to the. Um, uh, you have to. Um, if you look at the the program. It has three trips. 
The second trip is from GPS Sydney, Sydney oh, sorry, GPS New York to GPS Sydney, okay? And, and I'm actually calculating, this is a flight two, right? So I'm actually the distance. You see the first distance is the first fly. Second distance is the second fly. The third distance is the third fly. The first fly is Davis to New York. The second fly is from New York to Sydney. The third one is from Sydney to Davis. So that's why that corresponding to this three GPS address, uh, sorry, the distance, 25, 15 miles from Davis to New York and almost 10,000 miles from New York to Sydney, Australia. And then from Australia back to Davis is about 74, 1,082 miles. So, so basically that's why you're, you're including, you have to implement the transaction.cpp and the person.cpp in order to get this value correctly. I, depending on you to use this uh, uh, geo data source, the, the, the software in order to calculate this correctly. Okay, and now I'm going back to this part. Um, I'm going to do, uh, I need to, am I? Okay, I'm here actually. Minus LS. Okay, I detach. Wait a minute, wait a minute. No, 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 I cannot do that. I have to go back. Yeah, I stopped my I stopped my uh, my server. I, I I I have to keep it running because I want to make sure that you can submit your homework. So I want to keep these things alive. I want to go log in another session. Okay, screen, let me see, screen minus LS. I want to go back to homework part two. So I said minus R homework two part two. Okay, so I have this, this is my server. I was, I was checking my log um, about the, so now I'm going to run my server. Is this a server? Yes, this is a server. Okay, now I'm running my server, the part two server, and I'm going to run this code again. No, not this one. This one, yeah. So I'm going to run this program to, uh, to, to the part two server with my virtual ID. Okay, now you see that um, I send it to, this is a, if you ask you the program, it generate a lot of information it generate the result about, this is a description. This is basically generated by that description function I have. It calculate the, the distance and then it generate, and then it says successfully uh, status success, which means that if you do this, if you receive this message, it means that your homework assignment number two, part two, uh, is actually successfully being not just delivered, but your result is correct. So. Basically on the other side, I'm checking your result. I'm checking the distance. So I want to tell you how I check the distance. I'm not asking you to be exactly match the, the number that I provide, like a 25, 15, things like that. It's basically plus and minus 50. So if you have any number, I forgot it's a 50 or 100. If you're close enough, I will, I will, I will, I will mark it as correct. So let me, because of that, I'm going to show you an example, which I try to purposely make it wrong, and then I will show you what will happen, okay? So here is, am I still here? Okay, I'm here, all right. So yes, if I, if I allow to modify this program this way, just want to show you the feature. Um, Okay, this is the last part when I generate the JSON. I'm going to keep this, this JSON, keep this part of code somewhere. Uh, 
let me let me do this. Let me just comment it out everything. Okay, now I keep a copy about the correct version. So now I'm going to put it here. Uh, instead of doing this this string uh, for number two, I'm actually just put in uh, 200 mile. Okay, so I'm just basically say, hey, between this should be between New York and uh, New York and uh, uh, Sydney is about 200 miles instead of almost 10,000 miles. Okay, I'm just tweaking the result. If you did the calculation incorrectly, all right. So now I'm going to compile the program and I'm going to run the program. Okay, you see, I'm doing the same thing. I'm running over there. Okay, and it will detect it. This is incorrect. The result is incorrect. And, and it says RC is three. RC of three usually means that the second one, which is the second distance is incorrect. You can see that the, the way you submit, this one is correct, the first one is correct, this one is incorrect, and this one is, is correct, okay? So it basically tell you which one is, is incorrect as, as a server it will check. So if you do this, let, let me show you another example. <coughs> What was the number that, uh, sorry. So the correct number should be 9937. So what I want to do is that, okay, if it's 9937, <clears throat> I can, I just want to show you that how we, we decide whether you're correct or not. So I do 99, what's that, 9937. So I do 9977, okay? So it's a little bit more. I gave a little bit more of this number. And then I make it and I run it. This time it was a success. Because even though I'm not entering 9937, but this is close enough. I think what I did in my logic is a plus and minus 50. If you actually, the precise distance between these two GPS location, if you calculate within 50 miles uh, uh, difference, I will count it correct for homework assignment number two, uh, part two, okay? All right, that's, that's basically uh, the homework assignment number two. Uh, homework assignment number one, your object is getting that VSID correctly. And homework assignment number two is you, you need to get a success for, for the result. You need to get this, this JSON back and where this says success. If you've done this, then you're, you're basically, your program functionally correct. And you just go through the, the third part, which you hand in, you hand in, only hand in this two file, person.cpp and the transaction.cpp because the rest, I already have it. I don't need that, okay? And I have the law to see that when you actually try to do the submission, okay? Any question? Are you still there? Yeah, I don't have any more questions. Okay, all right. I'm going to uh, I'm going to stop recording, and then I can start to put this uh, online so uh, you guys and other people can see this. Okay. Okay. And any question for today? I think I need to go because I I have a few other things I need to catch up, and also I need to start process the video. So I'm, I, I'm going to first stop recording, okay?